Hello, I'm Darren again. Today's question asks if I would discuss the altruistic narcissist. Now, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please click like and please consider subscribing to my channel. But just as a reminder, this video is not a substitute for support from a mental health professional, nor is it a tool to be used to diagnose someone. So first of all, the term altruistic, altruism, now that could be defined as not just caring about, but showing concern for the happiness, for the well-being of others. It's, it's something a lot of religions would preach as well as practice. And the example that would come to mind would be if you have two coats, give one of those coats to someone who doesn't have one. Philanthropists may be considered to be altruistic. Now that would be someone in a privileged position doing something to demonstrate care and concern for someone who's less privileged, uh, to help someone who's disadvantaged some way, help them to advance or improve their situation. But I think you could sum it up by saying altruism, it's an act of selflessness, doing something at a cost to ourselves and not necessarily expecting anything in return. Now, the common characteristics of narcissism include a sense of self-importance, arrogance, a sense of entitlement, a lack of empathy, being very disagreeable, uh, being resistant or sensitive to criticism. And I think you could sum a lot of this up by saying being very selfish. So the altruistic narcissist sounds like something of a contradiction. How can someone who lacks empathy have empathy for others less fortunate? How could, how could such a selfish person perform selfless acts for others? Well, don't forget some of those other qualities associated with narcissism. A need for admiration. Uh, a need to be the center of attention. The need to have control, to, to manipulate and sometimes to exploit others. But to be fair to the narcissist, would, is it true of any of us? Do we ever really do anything and not expect anything in return? For example, even just something as simple as holding the door open for someone, is it unreasonable to expect a thank you? The difference with the narcissist is they will not just hold that door open. They will want extreme gratitude. They will tell you how good of them it was to hold that door open for you. They will want everyone to admire them for holding that door open. Now, many altruistic narcissists, they're, they're harmless. All they really want to do is to look good and to feel good. All they want is your attention. They want your admiration. They, they want to feel good telling you how blessed they feel to have given away all their money, all their possessions to charity or whatever. They want to tell you how good it felt to have saved someone's life. Now, even if it's a load of crap, all they really want to do is to have you sit there as they bask in their own glory. But there can sometimes be a darker element. Now, as a childhood hero of mine once said, you know, villains who twirl their moustaches are easy to spot. Those who clothe themselves in good deeds are well camouflaged. Now, if you want, you can do a Google search to find out who it was said that. But I remember a story of, um, there was a family once and the mum was making dinner one night. She was making a, a big steak dinner, um, all the trimmings, you know, roast potatoes, gravy, all that sort of thing, a huge big dinner. And the husband and the kids, they were really excited. They thought there was some kind of special occasion. They were really looking forward to this. She never said a word. When the dinner was ready, she carried it in next door, gave it to the family next door. You know, the mum or dad next door was ill or something. The husband and the kids had to rummage through the cupboards looking for something to eat that night. With the altruistic narcissist, charity does not begin at home. Charity begins where there is an audience. Charity begins where there are cameras. So regardless of the action, whatever it is they do, no matter how good it is, no matter who indeed benefits from it, when it comes to the altruistic narcissist, it is all for themselves. It's all about themselves. They do it because it is worthwhile to them. They may benefit from it by, say, advancing their social status, by enhancing their reputation, by enhancing their position within an organization or something. They get to enhance themselves by having others pour admiration over them. In other words, the kindness, the generosity, it is a cloak for self-interest and self-promotion. They help others in order to help themselves or sometimes to control others, to, to embarrass others while looking virtuous and generous at the same time. And an example of that would be uh, many years ago I dated a girl and anytime her family were doing something, they were going to some kind of function, whatever, going out for a meal, they, they would invite me along, but they always insisted on paying. They said that I was their guest, so they insisted on paying. They would never take any money off me. 
But when we got there, they would be telling everybody that they were paying for me. And they would often imply that I would never pay for anything. I wouldn't even offer. In fact, I wouldn't even be there if it wasn't being paid for. So yes, they're getting to look virtuous. They're getting to look generous, but they're also getting to embarrass their target. Now, due to a lack of emotional depth, uh, a poor insight into themselves, many narcissists tend to think pretty much in all or nothing terms. It's, it's, it's a zero-sum game to them a lot of the time. It's, it's black or it's white, it's up or it's down, it's left or it's right. And they see things as good people do good things, and that refers to themselves. Bad people do bad things, and that refers to pretty much anybody that annoys them. So sometimes they will do what they believe is a good thing, but not necessarily understanding the difference between a good thing and the right thing. So what does altruistic narcissism look like? Well, there's many different ways that it can come across. There's the one who turns pretty much every conversation round to how generous they are. Even if they have to crowbar it into the conversation, they talk about what they did for someone else, you know, how they helped that person. Oh, oh, I had to help that poor family get a home, otherwise they would have been homeless, you know. I had to help that person through their addiction, get them off the drink, you know. I, I had to nurse that person through that awful illness, through that awful bereavement, and on and on it goes. Then there are those who, whatever it is they're doing, it had pretty much little to do with them. Now, they may have been part of a group, part of an organisation, part of a church or whatever, that did all the work, but they will pretty much turn up at the last minute. After everyone else has done the hard work, they will sort of be on the periphery, but turn up at the last minute to get their picture taken and to take credit for it. There's another kind, and there's somebody I used to know a lot of years ago. Um, they used to give me things to give to other people, to give to this, this family in particular. They would give them resources, they would give them money, they would do these little things to help them out, but they would always do it through me. You know, they would give me money and they would say, give that to them, but don't, don't tell them it's from me. Every single time it was, don't tell, don't tell them that it's from me. And there was one time they gave me some money and they said, give that to that family, but don't tell them it's from me. And I took the money and said, no problem. I'll just tell them it's from me. And the look on their face was priceless. You know, they actually took the money off me and gave it to them themselves. <laughs> now, a moment ago, I said about not necessarily knowing the difference between a good thing and the right thing. There are those who would force help onto other people, whether they need it or not, whether they ask for it or not. Even if it leaves them in a worse position, they will force it onto them. And if that person points out that they're now worse off, if they don't accept it, if they make any kind of complaint at all, you know, they get to look to others as if they are ungrateful and belligerent. The narcissist was only trying to help. And there are times when that kind of help, forcing that kind of help onto someone, it can keep them in a state of dependence on the narcissist, for example, a state of financial dependence. But the narcissist will also use that act of kindness and so on. Just as the example I gave a moment ago about the family, they will use those acts of kindness in order to humiliate people, uh, to point out, say, how dependent they are or how they're no good at being able to do anything for themselves. There are those who may be involved in some kind of charity group, some kind of charity work, a church group or something. But they will use the rules, the terms, the conditions. They use those in a way to keep the very people they're trying to help under a state of strain. You don't quite reach the criteria. You use the wrong colour ink on your application. You know, I didn't hear you pray the right prayer, so I didn't know what it is you wanted. And on and on it goes. But to everyone else, they are the most amazing caregiver ever. Now, social media. When it comes to an act of kindness, um, help somebody across the road, you know, donate money to something, whatever it is, these are all good things. Who's going to argue with that? Question I would ask sometimes is, why does everybody have to know about it? Why does it have to be done in front of cameras? Why does it have to be done and posted all over social media? That's what's come to be known as virtue signaling. Now, I made a video recently on the links between narcissism and virtue signaling. If you want to check that out, just to educate yourself. But I think a good indicator that there's a narcissist involved is the acts of kindness. They always focus on the person doing it. it has little to do with whoever or whatever is benefiting from it.
then there are those who actually prey on the vulnerable. They prey on the needy just to promote their own agenda, advance their own cause, increase their own social status, and sometimes, sometimes even to line their own pocket. They take advantage, they exploit those that they're supposed to be helping. Remember, whatever it is they're doing, whatever they're involved with, it's all about themselves. You know, if the charity, if the cause, if the person in need, if they don't have a lot of attention, the altruistic narcissist will tend to ignore it. They only care so much as there is an audience or there is something in it for them. And if you don't show admiration, if you don't show immense gratitude, you're either going to be discarded or they'll probably try and destroy your character somehow. If you were to point out their real character, how they really behave, the, you know, the behavior outside of these acts of kindness, then you're a monster. You don't care about others. You are ungrateful. You're jealous of their kind and sensitive nature. And then the narcissist's head, who's going to believe you? Look at all this amazing stuff I do. Who's going to believe you that I'm really toxic and horrible? And I have to be really careful when I say this because this is certainly not true of everybody involved in these things. But there are a lot of religious groups, a lot of churches, charities, community groups, uh, organizations that are full of narcissists. These upstanding, selfless, noble pillars of society. Meanwhile, though, back at home, with their own families. They are thoughtless, they are selfish, they are neglectful, they're even abusive towards their own partners, their own children. So what are the indicators? How do you see through that camouflage? Well, you know what, it's not really that easy, but I think some general pointers would be when they talk about what they do, when they talk about whatever it is they're involved with, are they talking about those who benefit from it in a very positive way and how that person's being helped, how they're benefiting from it? Are they talking about how helpless they are? Are they talking about themselves, how amazing they are to be involved in something like this? Do they keep bringing the conversation round to how hard they work to help others, how important it is to them that they help others, how generous they are giving away all their money and this, that and the other? When they talk about their brand new Porsche, when they talk about their second holiday home, when they talk about how well they're doing financially, their third Caribbean cruise this year, do they talk about it as if they're very humble and they feel blessed? And when you call them out, or when you ignore it, or when you're not interested, do they tend to block you? Do they tend to ghost you? Do they do something to try and insult your integrity, your character, if you're not exalting them? So they're just my thoughts on the altruistic narcissist. I'm sure there are many more examples, things that people could add. So please feel free to use a comment box below. I'm interested in some of the interesting discussions that are starting around these videos. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. And until next time, thanks for watching.